Talking about your genetic profile, you're probably not aware of what that is, but everybody is dealt a genetic hand. And, and when it comes to the longevity or the length of your life, we know that genetics play in, but there's also a lot of other factors, Tom, that come in there. But a little bit on epigenetics. If people don't understand the term epigenetics, basically what they have found is that how these factors like certain nutrients, certain xenoestrogens and those type of things actually affect the DNA profile. And there is a link on there without getting too scientific, but there is an area on the DNA that actually, when it's connected with these bad, bad nutrients or good nutrients, they it makes that genetic profile go one way or another. So if you have all the bad factors in your life, all the negative nutrients that's going the wrong way, you give the good stuff, good thoughts, happy thoughts, it goes the right way. Interesting how that puzzle is. Well, you, you know this as well as anybody, and you're a champion of this. You have the greatest attitude of almost anybody uh, ever. <laughs> well, hey, you know, I'm alive, brother. I'm <laughs> okay. But. The people that have that positive mental attitude and take it a couple steps further, spirituality, you know, not necessarily a certain religion or whatever, but spirituality, those people that meditate, they pray, they have a positive image towards their circumstance. And no matter what happens, they get rid of that stinking thinking. (laughs) Those people, their DNA actually uh, maintains a portion of the telomere that is responsible for fighting infection. So there's this illustration of your genetics can, it's called the expression of the gene. Yes. So, so gene like expression, that's about, a good yeah, point. So that's we, a good way so to put it. So we talked before. So you, you may have a, a, a terrible hand you're dealt as far as your genetics, but if, if we can focus on, like we just said, uh, spirituality, uh, the person that prays before he eats and thanks God and has a grateful attitude has better digestion when he's eating that food. Very he's true. getting more out of it. Uh, the, the person that can't forgive people, they just sit there and they're, they, they, life owes them everything, you know, and they're just waiting for it to come to them. They, they, all they're doing is hurting themselves. They're causing stress hormones. That it's going to affect their blood pressure. Yes. It, it, it's going to give them the degenerative conditions. And as I, I guess you know that the people you, you've you seen that get cancer, oftentimes a, a thing that is very consistent, they've been stressed terribly within that year or just prior yes. to that. Have you noticed? Yes. That? A stress so, event most of the time causes an initiation or, of it. Or initiate. Trigger, triggers that illness. So you could have had your genetic predisposition you pile on with the stress and that's what we're talking about these people on these islands the biggest stress they may have is uh you know where they're they don't, gonna, have, they don't have a pineapple for breakfast or yeah, something you know yeah, i mean they, they might just be out and grab it they don't even have to grow it <laughs> it's, so. and so there there goes back to these very simple things and and one thing that i remember i, I was listening to a speech from uh jo- dr joseph maroon who is the actually the 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 surgeon or the doctor for the pittsburgh steelers he's the lead neurosurgeon in, in pittsburgh a brilliant man and, and he said something that was the most profound thing when it comes to overall health he said, you know, and he was quoting Chuck Knoll, who was the Super Bowl coach for the Pittsburgh Steelers, two-time Super Bowl coach. And he said, you know, Chuck Knoll said that football is a very elaborate game. It's got X outs and Z outs and nickel packages and a very complicated process. But he said it comes down to fundamentals, blocking and tackling. He goes, if you can't block and tackle, you can have the best game plan and you're not going to win football games. And he said, you know, the human body is the very same. He said it's a very elaborate process. It's a very elaborate machine. We don't even know half the processes that are going on in there right now and probably won't for another 100 years. But when it comes to health maintenance, that machine, that's a very easy equation. It's about fundamentals. It's about good food and diet and being happy and not stressed and those type of things. So these people living on these islands, you're right. Yes, they're eating fresh enzymes. And yes, they're eating good uh, enzymatically rich foods. And yes, they're eating wild foods that are high in antioxidants and those type of things. But what it probably boils down to more than anything is that ease of life, that l- less stress in their life to where they're not being so pressured and pushed on a day-to-day basis plus they're on an island and uh, <laughs> they're on an island, they're on an island. <laughs> and have you ever been on an island oh yes i know that they right there have that attitude it's, it's no problem mom. <laughs> yeah, that's I, right you, you, I, you, I in fact I, I can even go there in my mind just thinking about being you usually on an don't island. have one of these no islands. watches so. probably yes and everything is a very like you said no problem everything's fine and they also don't, don't feel the need to overeat 
Yes. They're overconsumed. Oh. So, you know, if they have a drink with their friends, it's a drink. They, when they have uh, a meal, uh, Okinawa, they said typically the person would set up their meal, and of course it was all the good things, but a typical Okinawan would eat approximately 80% of what's on that plate. So he, he knew what he was going to need, but he was satisfied prior to the end of the meal. So calorie restriction self-imposed he's he's it's not because it's not there he yes. just he just feels comfortable with with that he doesn't feel like he has to overindulge and uh got 20 minutes to go through the drive up window and you know it, it makes mm-hmm. such a huge and then in turn the pace that we eat at a lot of times as right. well i saw a, a special the other night on uh the coney stands the hot dog stands in new york and they said from the time that the person orders receives and consumes now his hot dog is two and a half minutes from the time he walks up to the stand yeah. Yeah. and orders That's start the timer yeah. and by the time two and a half minutes is gone he's already eaten a foot long hot dog so in why because we're in this frantic pace and it brings back a very good point tom before we go to the break here is that the stomach and what most people don't understand is and, and what i didn't understand as well is that your your gut is like your brain it has receptor sites that are very similar to the brain so there's people now that are saying it you know that intuition that gut feeling that you get may very well be a a neurotransmitter type of thing going on because there are receptor sites very similar in the intestinal tract that there is in the brain i've heard up to 70 percent of our immune response can actually be linked back to our digestive tract. Digestive tract, no so question. That's and kind of some new philosophy yes. for me. So and, 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 and interestingly enough, when you were talking about the, uh, the eating under stress, and think about that, if we have receptor sites in the stomach that are very similar to the brain, to where when something stresses us, this alarm bell goes off, and we see that a lot, and, and, and whenever we're stressed, we get stressed in our stomach, we get sick at our stomach. The worst thing you could do there is eat in that scenario correct because if you eat there the stomach acids are low the digestive enzymes are restricted digestion the, the motility the most important thing of digestion is the ability that food to move around and churn like a blender that process stops as well under stress so when we sit down and you were talking about spirituality and prayer when you pray over that meal calm yourself down then that allows that whole process to work a lot sure. better so even if you're not into prayer before a meal at least calm yourself down be thankful to mother nature whatever you want to be thankful (laughs) be thankful that you have the food because there's a lot of people out there that need it and want it for sure but let's talk a little bit about calorie restriction when we come back from break time because that's the one thing we know you know we know kind of that genetics play into longevity but the one thing scientifically that can be documented if you restrict calories in mice or in any living but being anywhere they live longer than someone who is over consuming ha imagine that so we'll talk about uh buffets and overeating when we return uh, on this edition of understanding your health hang on folks we'll be back thanks 